M0FXB, welcome to my channel. So you've gone out and you've bought yourself a jewel hat. You haven't got anything else. You've bought that and you happen to have a, a Raspberry Pi 3B lying around or a 3. I'm, I've got a B. So the kind of thing you'd buy is you'd buy one of these. You'd think, well, you probably started off searching for a, a single one like this. Um, but then you saw the jewel one and thought, oh, that'll be handy. I'll uh, have a go at that, but then when you've come to set it up, it's a bit of a pain. So I'm going to uh, show you how I did mine, which which did work. So in the camera shot, as you can see, we've got an SD card, which is, I think, uh, 16 GB. We've got the dual hat with the antennas on the OLED screen and a Raspberry Pi uh, 3B. So we're going to get the SD card and put it into our PC and we're going to format it. So in it goes, <clears throat> and it's, it is loaded, that one, but I'm just going to format it. So let's go to file here at the bottom, uh, find it somewhere, PC, and then we'll find it and somewhere, normally find it. All right, found it. So then you just format the disk so that we know that it's blank. Click start. Get it formatted. <clears throat> Important you do this, really. If Now, if you've got one that's preloaded, that's different. If you get preloaded, then you just go, don't even look at this video until we get to the setup, the beginning setup process of, of PyStar, uh, which is a bit further up. Anyway. So we're formatted, so now we need to go to PyStar here, go to the download section, which is down a bit further. Click downloads, click select download PyStar, and I just use the usual one, which is the one from the bottom here. Click that and you'll get uh, a compressed file come up. When that's finished, send it to somewhere where you know you can find the disk image. Just remember that the, this all runs from a disk image, which basically runs and operates the Pi 3 and the, the dual band hat, almost like a hard drive running a computer. Uh, the thing you add to it is called a WPA file, which is basically your username and password for your, for your router at home, or, your, or if you use your phone, you'd, you'd, put in a, you'd put your hotspot on your phone on, and, and set the, I would set the same username and password as, uh, that you have at home then it will log straight in. <clears throat> so anyway, so you got your SD card in, it's blank, you've downloaded the, the disk image, you just want to get it on there. So you're going to need to use a program, I use Belina Etcher. So download that, it's free, I'll put the, the, the link in the description, it looks like this, and then the actual program when you open it looks like this. I'll just select it. So you, uh, you get this window and it comes up flash from file. So you select the file, <coughs> which will look like this. So find it where you saved it after the, the um, zipped file. And it's the disk image. Look for the disk image and this is what it looks like. And there's a little disk in the middle. So select it, click open. And then it will ask you to select your SD card, which mine is under E drive. Yours could be different, so that's fine. And then select flash. So now, now that's going to uh, take about three or four minutes to transfer the image. You get this message here, just say yes, from the file on your computer to the SD card. And once that's finished, we'll add our Wi-Fi details. Okay, we've got the image on the SD card now. Now we need to get our Wi-Fi details. So on the PyStar page, scroll down and look for PyStar Tools and go to Wi-Fi Builder. Now in this section here, you will put in your username and password and hit submit. So if you've got a, uh, we're using a Raspberry Pi 3B, just turn it over and then get your card and just slip it in like so. So turn it over. And then we need to get our 
board. Now, when you get these boards, you do most of the time have to solder the antennas on, which is a bit annoying, but doable. My soldering is terrible, as you can see. Then you need to get this and position it this way around. And we'll turn it like this, get the pins on there. Make sure they line up front and back pins. So have a look here, look like so, and like so. But make sure they line up. And then let's get our power into the Raspberry Pi. So we'll turn it here. We'll get our micro USB, just five volts. in there and it will all start flashing away and then it takes a couple of minutes to find it once it boots up we should be able to find it in our network by typing in h t t p two dots slash slash pi flatline star dot local with a a line like that and then Select that, and it sometimes it takes a couple of minutes. You've got to be patient. At first, nothing will show up, um, and sometimes you might even have to reboot it a couple of times. But it will be patient, and then eventually, you'll have a window turn up with a similar-looking Pi Star sort of colorings where you can now start to configure correctly for the, the fact that we've now got a dual hat. So we'll just wait a minute until that appears. So you get this screen come up. Now if it asks you to log into this screen, you put in, let's hit configuration, pi dash star. Then you put in raspberry, R-A-S-P, B E R R Y. And that will log you in. So now you're in the configuration page. Just waiting for that to come up. So let's get our call sign in there. And the frequency, well, the frequency right now doesn't matter because when we select dual hat, um, it's going to add an, an extra line here. So for now, let's get our call sign in there. We'll also select duplex repeater, repeater and then we will apply. I'll oh, get my call sign in there, of course. and then apply those changes. Takes a minute. Right. Let's get the frequencies in there that worked for me. So it's 434 and then 950, see all the zeros. And then 439. On the actual code plug, we set the opposite way round, Rx and Tx. So 43, and I'll show you that in a bit. I'll put 950 here. Like so. And then we'll also select DMR. And now we need to select the correct hat. Now this is really important. So I just start from the top. So DMR at the top. Then general configuration, call sign, hasn't asked for our DMR number yet, but it will. 434950 and 439950. I'm not doing the location now. And then, let's have a look. Now, this is the important one. The, the, we have to select the correct hat or it won't work. So, the hat we want, go down here. And it's this one here. 
MM, DVM, HS, dual hat, and then you've got these core signs here for GPIO, and then click Apply Changes. Give that a minute to, to take, and then we'll add the DMR section. Right, and sometimes you've got to do it a couple of times, but it has taken the hat, and it's it has reset the frequencies. Now you get this. Let's just um, add DMR now, and then uh, and then we'll go back to doing the frequencies and the DMR number. Okay, we've got DMR. Now let's, let's get the uh, DMR number in there. And redo these frequencies again. It seems to have got rid of them. Like so. Okay, and then we'll apply that. We're edging towards the right place here. So let's have a look. We've got the right frequencies. We've got DMR selected and the right hat. Now we've got to go down. So we'll start at the top, scroll down past the frequency. We've got call sign, DMR, frequencies in there. Remember when we do our hotspot, the TX will be the RX. Go down. Now we'll, we'll use BM United Kingdom. So we need to get our self care password in there. So self-care is Brandmeister. So go to Brandmeister Self-Care on Google. Uh, let's put that in proper. There you go. Log in, create your account, and then once you're logged in, you can set up in the air, go down on the left here to self-care and to the part that says hotspot security here. Turn that little slider on, type in your password here and save it, that'll be for whenever you use Brandmeister UK. Then back at your thing here, and I put the same password here. Now remember, you don't have to use BM United Kingdom. There's loads you can use depending on where you are in the world, but that's the one we use, and that's the passport, password I need. So I'll apply changes. So now that's all good. The next thing we need to do is make sure that the radio is uh, is set to a channel that is configured for all the settings that we've just put into our PiStar hotspot. Now the good thing about um, using a dual hat is you can actually receive two channels at the same time. Now they don't, because DMR isn't dual digital receive. Um, it will only actually receive one at a time, but if you've got one on, if you've got one channel talk group on A and one talk group on B, um, if one isn't speaking, th then you don't have to change the frequencies, and then they'll both come through just using the one, the one hat, which is quite cool. Um, so that will be the next part of this video. But at the moment, let's just go back to configuration. We want to get our little TV screen working. So if you've got a next to you screen, so right, start at the top, go to the top square. And for me, it's OLED screen. That's all I've got to do and apply changes. And you'll see my OLED screen start to come to life. Um, now, if you've got a next to one and you're using a Pi 3, you can just select next to and then in the middle, select USB and apply. And the next to screen will come to life. So... Let's just for my OLED screen apply these changes. Now in the in the hopefully you'll be able to see shortly uh, my screen start to show something as that configures. Now with a bit of luck. Well we need to, we're not linked to a talk group yet, and we're gonna make our radio do that next, and then you'll see the screen do its job. So Let's um, go to the the talk. Sorry, the co the co plug part of this video. Right now we're on the. We've opened up the co plug that you get with an Eddie Tone eight seven eight, 
and I'll show you what my settings are. So I've got a zone just with two channels in it. So a zone is your group of channels. So as you turn the, I think it's the middle knob, you can turn, change zones. And as you select the up and down button here, you go up and down. No, let's get it right. The middle button here is up and down, is changing the zones. Sorry, my mistake. The middle, you go up and down, you change the zone. When you're on a zone, you can select the channels within a zone by changing the, the middle knob at the top, the turning knob. So I've only got two channels on here. So on my code plug, if you go to the, the zone, I've called it dual hat, and I've just got two channels in here. One is talk group nine, one is talk group 91. And I'll show you what the actual channels look like. Select channel here. Um, and let's just go to the talk group nine one first. So double click that. <clears throat> and so I've called it dual hat TG9. The receive and transmit frequencies are in reverse of what the they are on the hotspot. So if you look here, 439.950 is on receive. And if I just minimize that and go to the hotspot, receive is 434.950. So it's reversed. And so look here, TX is 439.950. So if I go back to the thing here, TX, let's get it right. TX is 434950. So hopefully I got that backwards. I do actually get confused myself. So TX 434950. So on my Pi Star, it should be 439 on TX. So let's just uh, have a look. There you are. It is, yeah. So we can get it back on dashboard now. So now let's turn to, let's just turn to talk group 91. And let's key and let's see if we get some act get it, get us on to talk group ninety one. Right, that didn't happen. Let me just keep looking at the settings. Right, so we've got some activity now. I'm going to go over the settings again because I just had to mess around a little bit. So, on the jaw hat on the code plug, let's just do talk group nine first. The actual frequency was 439.450 on receive and 434.450 transmit. And in this window, I'll move it over to make sure you can see it, you'd, it's selected in repeater, repeater there. Okay, now in the actual configuration, we've got the, rec the receive frequency, 434.450. And the TX frequency at 439450. Same hotspot, still at the top, duplex. So basically these two middle ones have been selected, MMDVM host, DMR numbers here, call sign, Brandmeister with your self-care password. And so that now works. I've got two talk groups coming in at the same time here. You can see them. I've got, well, I've got 2356. Now, if I get a break in the transmission, in theory, if you're on talk group nine, on my hotspot, which I'm trying to find, they are talk group nine. In theory, I can, um, I can add another talk group by pushing... Right. As it's actually receiving, it won't do it. I'll, I'll see if I can do it in a minute. I'll just go off that talk group. Well, I'm not going to play around too much now, but in theory, you could be on talk group 9 and you could tell it to disconnect or you could change talk group. Um, because it's on a separate slot. Now, it does have to be on a separate slot. Let me just check that, actually. So, uh, let's have a look at a dual band. Talk group 9 is on slot 2. Now, talk group 91 is on slot 2. We need talk group 9 on slot 1 for it to change. 
simultaneously, you know, while someone's talking. So let's find dual band hat, talk group nine. It's probably right in front of my face. There it is there. So that's on slot two. Now if I put that on slot one, click OK, send that to the radio. Let's just do that a minute. Right, still playing around here. So look, we've got someone coming in on uh, talk group 23526. Now if we, on the radio, we're on talk group 9. Now in theory, I should be able to key on that. So if I push and like that, push hash, then tile type 4000, it should allow me to disconnect. Let's see if it works. Because, the, and it's done that. Now I haven't disconnected, but you've seen that in the dashboard, that 4000 was, reg, you know, did come in there. So, we're on 23526. We're literally just playing around. Let's, um, on, we're on, on slot one. Talk group nine is on slot one. So let's type in talk group 91 and see if it adds it to our little list. No, we have to wait for a gap. But I mean, there's more to do this. Um, there is, you know, you, I know you can receive two at the same time on this. I could just try turning to talk group 91 and keying. See the way that talk group 91 has now appeared? So in theory, when one stops speaking, if talk group 91 is active, you'll get it. Now, just for the last thing what I'm going to do, because this is fun... I'm going to um, see if I can just turn on my Nextian screen. So what I'll do, I'll just plug it in. Now at the moment it's obviously doing all the data for, for um, let's get it, try and get it in camera shot. So this is just like the closing finale of our video. <laughs> so... What we're going to do, still all working good, what we're going to do is we're going to go into configuration and this time we've plugged in the Nexium screen into the USB of the Raspberry Pi. Yeah, and then we're going to go down here, we're going to select Nexium and the bottom one is USB, so Nextian, Devot USB, and we're going to apply changes. And in theory, it will stop using my OLED screen and start to use my Nextian screen. So if you've got a Nextian screen, obviously you have to. There's a process to loading up the Nextian screen with the correct info. So look straight away, that's worked. You can see on the Nextian screen, it's not bright, but. It's got my call sign, and it's got, look, it's got two DMR groups coming in now. Let's turn it up. So, on time slot two, people are keying up on 91. And on time slot one, there is audio coming through. Time slot one is whatever that's connected to. So let's go to the dashboard. So TS1 is on, oh, it's on 4000. So I should put that onto something that's got activity, shouldn't I? I wonder if I can do that. I think if someone stops speaking, I could go, well, actually, what I could do, no, no, I have to wait till someone stops speaking, then I could transmit on, a, put a talk group number in, like 2350, and it would receive that as well. But I think that's a good finale to my video. So we've got, you've seen the 
we'll just go once one final of the code plug so the code plug on let's just show talk group 91 on my jaw hat so that's your talk group nine so look receive transmit repeater you're on nine local digital mid power so that's all the settings there and on the actual hotspot if we go to configuration last time to see um, it's duplex, MNDVN, DMR mode. Now, don't forget, you can use Fusion and D-Star, but they're different settings. But this is what I've done. Uh, Pi star, call sign, DMR number, frequencies opposite to your code plug. Brand Meister with the self-care password. Job done. Dual hat configured. So if this has helped, if you uh, like watching my channel and want me to make lots more videos, Please subscribe. It does boost my uh, enthusiasm. And uh, 7-3, thanks for watching.